So this is an interesting one. Uh, today we're solving Philip Newman's half a cake, which is his puzzle celebrating his half birthday. And before I talk through the rules, there are two things that I want to articulate at the beginning here. One is that I fully acknowledge that this gas was more challenging than most of the gases that we've posted recently. I saw a lot of 30 plus, 40 plus minute solve times on this one. And so I want to start by thanking those of you who attempted or who completed this puzzle for two things. One, for having faith in us to give you a puzzle that even though it might have flummoxed you at first, was ultimately figure outable and hopefully worth your time. And two, for having faith in your own ability to tackle something that was maybe half a step up and see your way through it, despite it not necessarily being as, as clear as um, or as obvious as some of the puzzles that you've solved from us before. So thank you for that. I have been really um, struck by how much the gas community has focused on kind of continuing to learn and develop and grow. Um, I think that there are a lot of areas of life where adults are not necessarily encouraged to learn and grow and develop their skills. And I hope that we can be an area that does that for a lot of people. So thank you for sticking it out. Second of all, I want you to be aware that what you're going to see in this walkthrough is in large part like YouTube magic. Um, I have pre-solved this puzzle. This is not a blind solve. I have spent a not insignificant amount of time thinking about how I can best present this to you and how I can best kind of show a clean and clear solve path that will be helpful to you guys. So I don't want you to watch this and think, oh, Clover's just a wizard. She must have just seen these things in exactly this order. And if I can't do that, clearly I'm never going to be a great solver. First of all, I'm not a particularly great solver. And second of all, just remain aware that what you're seeing is a solve that I have pre-planned. I think I've solved this four times before recording it. And I have notes. So don't read too much into this solve if it seems very smooth. This is me trying to teach, not me trying to share what an unadulterated solve might look like if I saw this, for instance, in a contest. That would look very different. That said, let's talk about the puzzle. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each marked three by three region. And we also have ratio pairs. So ratio dots, these black dots separating two digits, tell you that the digits on either side have to be in a one to two ratio, which means that one of them is two times as big as the other. So our options are one and two, two and four, three and six, and four and eight. It's called ratio pairs and not just a ratio because the pairs terminology tells us there's no negative constraint. We're only looking at pairs of digits and not at the entire grid. That means that even if there is no black dot, you don't necessarily know that that's not a valid ratio pair. So like these two digits could still be four and eight, even though there's no black dot, that would be fine. So we're only focusing on the ones where there are black dots. Now, first thing, we're going to do with this. We're going to kind of divide this into phases like a good boss fight. We have a bunch of runs of three cells that are joined by dots that see each other. We have them here, here. We actually have six of these, right? So I'm going to temporarily highlight these. Now, there are only two ways to do a run like this in a standard Sudoku with all of the cells seeing each other. As long as you're using the digits one through nine, the only ways we can possibly do this are to have the digits be one, two, four, or two, four, eight. Those are the only sets of three digits where you multiply by two twice. So some of those are ruled out from some of our positions here. So this one tells us this has got to be the two, four, eight option. We don't know which way around it goes yet, but let's mark in the four in the center. This one also tells us that this is a four. Now these we don't know for sure because there aren't any digits from that range excluding things. But let's work, let's see if we can work something out about them. So this is either one, two, four or two, four, eight. So one thing we can mark is that the middle cell is definitely either two or four. And then the outer cells are from the set one, two, four, eight. And even though I normally wouldn't mark four digits into a cell, I'm gonna do that right now for illustrative purposes. You'll see why that's relevant a little bit later on. Here we're going to go 1, 2, 4, or 2, 4, 8, but there's a 4 in the row already. So this has to be our 2. We have to be in 1, 2, 4 land. That will actually resolve this because we now have a 2 down there. 
so we know which way around this goes. This again, one, two, four, two, four, eight. So we're going to do the same thing we did down here and mark a two, four there. And I guess I can remove this eight. That's not really that exciting at this point, but it'll be useful later. And again, one, two, four, two, four, eight. So two or four in the middle and then one, two, four, eight up at the top up here. So let's look at the digits that are kind of attached to some of these runs. Because there are only certain digits in a Sudoku that can be on a ratio pair at all. And these orange digits are now a bit limited. So these have to be in a pair with a one, two or four or an eight in some cases. So what can we actually put there? Well, it has to be a one, two, four, or eight, because those are the only digits that can kind of get paired up together like that. We can actually go a little bit further here. One can only pair with two and four can only pair with two or eight. So we can put a two, eight pencil mark there and there. So that's that taken care of. Now let's kill that highlighting and let's focus on the other dots, the ones that did not come in runs of three. So this is what else we have. And if you look at this, for example, I went through the possible ratio pairs earlier, uh, one and two, two and four, three and six, four and eight. Well, three of those are ruled out. One and two is ruled out in this column. Two and four is ruled out in the column. Four and eight is ruled out in the column. This has to be a three, six pair. And there's already a three in this box. So we're gonna put a three there. That places sixes in both of these positions because three can only be in a pair with six. Same thing going on here. We couldn't make this one and two, two and four, four and eight, because among other reasons, we already have a one, two, four, eight in the column. So this also has to be a three, six pair. There's a three here. So we know which way around those are going to go. How about up here? Same deal. One, two, four, eight are ruled out. So that is a three, six pair. And over here, this is a little bit tougher to see, but Observe that we don't have two or eight here, or another way of seeing it is that we already have three digits from the set one, two, four, eight. So we can't do like one, two, or two, four, or four, eight here because that would require another two digits from that set. So this has to be yet another three, six pair. And feel free to pause and work through those cases yourself. Now that gives us something kind of interesting, which is that we have three, six pairs here and here. So where do three and six go in row five? The only positions either of those can go in are these two cells because they're ruled out of here and they're ruled out of here. So this is a three, six pair. This three tells us which way around it goes. And this three now tells us which way around this goes. So we're gonna start placing threes and sixes now. That's the next place we're gonna go with this. So let's get rid of the highlighting once again. And this is the next phase of our boss fight. So let's try to place a three in here. We have a three down here. No threes there or there, so there's our three. If we try to place a three in here, it's in one of these cells. And if we try to place a six in this region, it's there. That six is actually going to resolve this and tell us it goes this way around. This three does the last step of placing a three in this region. We have threes in these columns. We have threes in these rows, so three must go there. And let's finish up with some sixes. So we have sixes in these columns. So we're gonna eliminate six from these cells. So six in this region goes here. And six in region eight goes only there. There are sixes blocking off all of the other locations. Okay, so now we have all of our threes and sixes placed. So this grid is looking quite a bit friendlier. Now, there are probably other ways to proceed from this point. This is what I saw. And this is what I've decided to share with you, because I think that even though it's not the easiest thing in the world to see, it is based on Sudoku principles that um, are seen in other more straightforward puzzles. So hopefully it feels at least somewhat familiar to you. And if this is the first time you're seeing something like this, hopefully it's something you feel confident enough once you see it to add it to your toolkit. So let's look at these cells. Let's make those pink. Nice, friendly color. These cells contain five, seven, eight, and nine, right? These cells, if we just look at vertically in the column, contain five, seven, and nine. And that's kind of interesting because that means that we have four cells that can only contain the four digits five, seven, eight, and nine. So we know five, seven, eight, and nine are accounted for in this row. That means we can't put five, seven, eight, or nine anywhere else. Another way to see this perhaps is that these three cells are the only places where we're allowed to put one, two, or four in this row. So they have to be one, two, and four. We're going to eliminate eight. 
Now, let's look right here. So, two cells in a ratio containing some combination of 1, 2, and 4. What could those be? They could be 1 and 2. They could be 2 and 4. They certainly can't be 1 and 4. We can't just skip the middle digit because we would no longer have a ratio. This is probably the best thing from this puzzle, the best single move to put in your toolkit. If you see something like this where you have a ratio, where you have two possible options, the middle digit, like the shared digit, in this case a 2, will always have to be in there because you can't just skip that digit, you'd no longer have a ratio. And that rules 2 out of this cell. Now what can these digits be? If this is a 1, that's a 2. If this is a 4, that's a 2. It's another version of that kind of skipping the middle thing, where when we have this pair of digits that are in a ratio, one of them has to be the middle kind of common digit, a 2. So this is now a 2. And I imagine that that's the point where a lot of folks got hung up, because that's something that unless you kind of know that it's there, unless you know to look for it, it might not be obvious. I think that's... If, if I'm correct about why so many people got hung up at this point, that's actually something that's really interesting for me to learn as a setter. Because for me, having solved and set a lot of these, I see this and I immediately think, ah, I need a two, therefore it has to go there. But having to actually work through the cases, if you haven't seen this before, does feel, I mean, honestly, it feels a little bit like bifurcation. I get why people said, I felt like I had to test cases on this. Because in a certain in a certain sense, everything you do in a Sudoku does boil down to case testing. It's just different heuristics layered on top of case testing. Um, it's just different shortcuts to organize your case testing. And at, at the end of the day, it really is all case testing. It's just some case testing we do so often in the same way that we start to see it as something other than case testing. But that means that when you're not familiar with a particular scenario and you really do have to work through the cases in your head to understand how it works, it can feel weird. It can feel kind of alien. It can throw you off if it's unfamiliar. I get that. So this is now a two, long story short, because that can't be a four because that would make this a one. So that's our two. That makes this a four. And let's resolve this. This is now the two, four, eight universe. So this is our two. And that's our 8. We can eliminate 2 there, but we don't know exactly what it is yet. We'll get there in a moment. And because this is 8, 8 can only be in a ratio with a 4, so that's a 4. So now this is the 1, 2, 4 option. And because we've just placed a 4 here, this is now a 1, making this a 4, making this a 1. Now let's look what effect that's had down here. So we've placed 2, 4, and 8 in this column. That makes this a 1 which gives us a 1, 2, 4 for this ratio. This 1 gives us a 4 here and a 1. The 1 can't be paired with an 8, certainly. It must be paired with a 2, and that makes the 4 paired with an 8. The 8 gives us a 2 here and an 8 here. And now we have this big moment, because this is the final phase of our boss fight. It's the phase where we have accomplished all of the Kropke dots, all of the ratio dots, and the reason I'm not saying Kropke, by the way, is because Kropke traditionally refers to having both black and white dots. So to be super, super clear, this is a ratio pair Sudoku because we're only doing ratio. And it's funny because it's one of those things, there's not really any point to being a stickler about that in particular, but in general, using terminology like that consistently is the only way we can lead people to other puzzles that are similar as if we kind of consistently use the same names for them. So it is worthwhile to kind of keep track of what the quote unquote proper name for these things are, because that's how you that's how you catalog things. That's how you find other puzzles that are like this. But anyways, enough on that. Let's finish up with some classic Sudoku, shall we? So what do we still need here? We need a five, seven, and nine. That's not our five because there's a five in the column. We still need to place a one in this region so it can only go there. These are gonna have to be five, seven, eight, and nine in some order. We need a 5, 8, and 9 in this column. That's not a 5, and that's not an 8. This can't be an 8. We're looking at column 1 now. So these are going to be 5, 7, and 9, and we can eliminate 5 here and 9 here. These digits are 5, 7, and 8, and the 8 can't go in either of these cells, 
so the 8 must go here. What do we still need in this region? We need 5, 7, and 9 here. This can't be a 5, that can't be a 7. That gives us a nice little 7-9 pair situation here. So that's going to be 2 and 4 to finish the column. So we're placing a 2 and a 4. That's not a 5, and this is also a 7 or 9. This is going to be a 5, 7, 9 from the row. These are going to be 5, 7, or 9 from the row. And the reason we're seeing the digits 5, 7, and 9 so much, by the way, is not at all a coincidence. Those are the only digits that can never appear on a ratio in a standard Sudoku. So that's why we're seeing them all at the end once we've resolved all of the ratio clues. How about this column? We have 5, 7, 8, and 9 already placed in this kind of quad here. So we need to place 1 and 4 still, which will go there and there. We need a 9 here. That actually gives us our 5 there. And our last digit in this row is an 8. We need a 1 in this column, which will go here, and our last digit in this region is a 5. So this can no longer be a 5 or a 9, so that is a 7. That's going to be an 8 for our last digit in the column, and that resolves some of our pencil marks. This has been an 8 for a while. I'm sorry if you've been screaming. Um, this is now a 9 and a 5 because of the 7 in the row. And let's take care of cleaning up our last pencil marks. These can't be 9 because there is a 9 in the region. This cannot be a 9. This can't be a 5, 8, or 9, so that's a 7 thanks to the column. There's a 9 and an 8, and a 7, 5, 7, 9, and 1, and 2. So I hope that you enjoyed that and found it informative. I liked this puzzle a lot. I really enjoy ratio and difference pairs. Um, personally, I like these better without the negative constraint. So I think that um, it's always a pleasure to do one of these that uh, has kind of a nice symmetrical appearance and like a nice solving flow to it. And I, I really enjoyed solving this one. And hopefully this brought some joy to, to you guys and your solving too. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.